So a really impressive new AI image generator has just been released. Many could not resist the temptation to call it a mid-journey killer. Uh, I've got my thoughts on that. I don't necessarily think that it is, but that's not to say it isn't super exciting with like a world of potential because it's open source and free. Today, we're gonna dive into Flux to see how good it is, how you can start using it today for free, no wait list, and what it means for the overall landscape of AI imagery. Okay, let's hop into DeLorean and get this bad boy up to 88 miles an hour. So Flux is a new and again, free and open source AI image generator from Black Forest Labs. It was created by a number of ex-stability.ai employees. And while I know that the knee-jerk reaction has been very much mid-journey comparisons, really what this is, is what Stable Diffusion 3 should have been. Now, I'm not gonna get into the whole stability.ai drama, but suffice to say, if you weren't following along with the whole thing, the release of Stable Diffusion was kind of a mess. To put it lightly, the the reaction was mixed, but at least out of all of that, Black Forest Labs was born. And this includes team members who have worked on things like Latent Diffusion, Stable Diffusion XL, and Stable Diffusion Video. We're gonna take a look at examples in just one second, but first charts, because you know, AI loves benchmarking charts. So as we can see via the chart, Flux.1 uh, is clearly outperforming models such as Stable Diffusion 3 Ultra, Midjourney V6, uh, Dolly 3, and I do note that Google Google's Imagen isn't even on this. Come on, get it together, Google. So starting off with examples and of course, kicking off with our now famous man in a blue business suit walking down a busy city street. You, you know what, wait a second. Uh, it showed up over the weekend. Thank you all so, so, so much. Um, uh, I got something in my eye. I'm just gonna walk off screen real quick and get it out. All right, I got it out. Uh, our results from Flux on our man in the blue business suit are pretty actually impressive. I would definitely qualify this at the level of mid-journey V6. A pretty good amount of, you know, depth of field background blur, some really nice bouquet back there. But overall, he does look like he naturally fits in the scene. He does not look like he's copy pasted in. Uh, skin textures and suit textures all look really good. I mean, granted, the reason that I run this test is because it's kind of boring. So it's always a good way of seeing what the model is capable of. Uh, but yeah, this does have a nice aesthetic to it compared to like Stable Diffusion 3, which to be fair is technically accurate. It just sort of lacks in any sort of feeling of character or dynamics. When you really punch in on this guy as well, it really does feel like there are two separate light sources. Like you see this rim light around his shoulder. Um, it just, yeah, it, he kind of looks like he's copy pasted into the background image. We're going to take a look at some more examples in just a minute, but I do want to point out that Flux.1 has three different like flavors. You can use all three of these today. You're like, you're not locked out of anything. Uh, the first one is Flux Pro, which is the uh, state of the art, like top of the line version. Uh, this is also available for commercial use. Uh, the second version is the dev model. This is the version with the developer weights. Uh, it is the non-commercial model. And then finally, there is Flux Schnell, Schnell being German for fast. And that gives us some insight into where the name Black Forest came from. Yes, the land of delicious chocolate and children's stories about kids being eaten by wolves and cannibal witches. For quick reference, here is our man in the blue business suit. On the left, he is in the developer model and the right is the Schnell model. The Schnell model is obviously a little more saturated, kind of has like an HDR look and definitely has less, uh, you know, texture. His beard definitely looks a lot more like painted in, uh, whereas the developer and pro models, uh, yeah, uh, tend to skew much more photorealistic. I'll say in terms of photographic and cinematic styles, Flux really does kind of fly. Uh, here is an image that I generated a few days ago in the look at Midjourney 6.1. Uh, this is a Phil Noir photograph of, of a beautiful woman with white hair standing in a dimly lit, you know, PI office. So taking this prompt and running it in Flux resulted in this, which I am, you know, really impressed by. Overall, it definitely skews much more naturalistic. The character of the femme fatale, while yes, I mean, still super model beautiful, does look like it could be a real person. Uh, nice job with the skin textures down to the sort of the folds in the neck right there. Um, the halo light above her tracks very nicely. Uh, and then the highlights in red coming in from the window look really great as well. Now I will say that the background details of the PI office do leave a bit to be desired. It, it, you know, it definitely has a feeling that the art department did not have enough of a budget here. And just for fun, a few more cinematic examples of famous movies. Let's play a little game and see if you can guess which one. Here's number one. Number two, 
number three, and number four. I don't think you guys should have any problems with naming those. Now, one of the biggest touted advancements with Flux is not only its prompt adherence, but its ability to generate text within an image. For example, last week in my look at Midjourney 6.1, I generated up an image for my dream board. Uh, yes, Tim's Bar and Grill, somewhere in Bora Bora, apparently. Flux obviously had no problems with this and was even kind enough to upgrade Tim's Bar and Grill. Apparently, whatever location it's in, it's doing very well. Uh, what I really liked about its text generation is the fact that it actually varied the fonts and styles used. And although there are some problems like bar and end grill, um, you know, just the fact that it gave me something that wasn't just one neon sign, I, it was pretty impressive. Uh, this is something that I might take somewhere else to in paint out or, you know, re-roll a few more times to see what I get. This was just you know, a straight up one shot, no cherry picking. But I think that if you spend some time with it, you can get some really great generations out of it. Gerald Sands generated this up. I, I'm just popping this in because I thought that was really funny. I do want to point out that there are definitely limits to the amount of text that you can generate as AI Opener did here by putting in like the entire monologue of Roy Batty's famous speech at the end of Blade Runner, you know, the tears in the rain one. Yeah, I mean, it kind of ended up a bit of a mess. I mean, it tried, but I think where it really flies is being able to contextually put text into an image uh, as Brent Lynch did for me here by designing a theoretically media t-shirt. Hands and fingers are also said to be a fairly strong point in flux. So generating this image up, uh, this is something obviously for obvious reasons I get a little bit picky on. No, it looks pretty good. Uh, looks to be a G minor seven chord that she's playing. Um, you know, overall hand placement looks good. Fingers don't look super crazy. The thumb does look maybe a little on the elongated side, but I've definitely seen guitar players that are able to get that stretch and reach. Oh, jealous of them. I do want to show off some community outputs of what Flux is capable of just to show sort of the range of what it's able to do. Uh, Eric Canante put together this illustration of uh, the character Aeon Flux, but it's, you know, it's an illustration, but it's a photo of an illustration. Uh, yeah, no, this is uh, the fact that it's able to do two different stylistic things. Very impressive. Fofor points out that Flux seems to do character turnarounds very well with this sort of like hybrid dog person. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a little bit on the freaky side. I don't care. He's a good boy. If I saw this monstrosity walking down the street, I would still run up and pet him. And Julian Blick gives us some very accurate stormtroopers. I'm going to get into how you can start using Flux in just a minute, but I do want to point out a couple of limitations, at least for right now. The fact that Flux is open source means that like these limitations will not last for very long. So currently there's no upscaling or in-painting within Flux, uh, and additionally you can't do image to image in Flux either. I mean, that is just for now, though. Obviously, there are plenty of solutions around all of those, like taking your Flux output and bringing it over to something like Magnific or Leonardo's Image Upscalers. And although you can't get true like image to image right now, uh, Go, K, Go did build a nice little applet here in which you can upload a photo and it will then generate a prompt out for you. It, it actually ends up generating the image as well. That said, all of this will not last very long. Uh, Wand, which is a platform that I've actually been meaning to spend more time with, uh, well, they just ended up putting out a video showcasing the fact that they are integrating Flux into their workflow. So as you can see, you can, you know, paint something and then essentially begin in painting on top of that using Flux as well. So yeah, all of this is on its way. In terms of being a mid-journey killer, I mean, I don't really think in terms like that. And I'm sort of, still sort of surprised that I got the YouTube plaque considering that I don't say bombastic stuff like this killed this and this killed that. Mid-journey has its own thing going on in terms of aesthetics and workflow. And obviously they have, you know, other projects like 3D and video coming along. Though there is something interesting with Flux coming up that we're going to take a look at in just a little bit. All of that said, I mean, let's just be happy that we have two things. I mean, one does not have to be better or kill the other. Uh, two things are good. Now, to get started with Flux, there are a few different ways. Uh, probably the easiest is just to head over to Hugging Space and use one of the spaces there. Currently on Hugging Face, you can use both the Schnell and the Dev model. Uh, just click on any one of these. Uh, it'll load up and you know you can enter your prompt and get started right away. 
Now, at some point, you probably will run out of free credits on Hugging Face. So uh, what I would actually recommend doing at that point is heading over to fall.ai. Now you do get some free credits here as well, but the plus side here is that you can actually use the pro model as well. Once again, at some point you will run out of free credits. Uh, that said, pricing on fall is pretty low. You can go as low as $5.99 to like a dollar if you want to, uh, or up to $20. Um, and flux is fairly cheap. So if you go as high as $20, I mean, you're gonna be able to generate a lot of images. Plus there is no recurring subscription cost. Um, now that said, if you wanna run things locally, the easiest way is via Pinocchio. Now that said, I do air quote that because uh, it's a thing. I'm not gonna go over Pinocchio installation in this video. I've done it a couple of times now. There is a link down below to sort of the latest version of installation of Pinocchio. Um, what you'll want to do once you have it installed is download Comfy UI. Once you have that running, you'll want to go to download models and either download the dev or the Schnell version. Um, now that said, on a Mac, I think that your best bet is to download by URL here, and I'll give you the URL that you should use down in the comments below. Once everything's installed, you'll want to come over to workflows here, uh, go into view folder, navigate to workflows, and under flux, uh, you'll see an image that's fluxschnellexample.png. Open up the web UI on this side, and then simply drag the PNG into the workflow, and then it'll auto magically appear for you. Now, that said, if you'll note, when I hit Q prompt, I end up with an error. I've got a ticket in with a Pinocchio, guys. I do think that the solution here is that I need to do what I told you guys about earlier and actually download it from the URL that I'm gonna provide down in the comments. But yeah, so in the meantime, you know, unless you have a super beefy PC, I do think that PCs will probably fare better on this front or you feel like putting your test flight helmet on and spending a few hours crashing into a wall, um, you know, I would probably advise on waiting a few weeks until maybe optimized versions start appearing. And if all of this is not your cup of tea, and I totally get that, um, don't stress, Flux is literally popping up everywhere. Um, again, there's a link to at least four places that you can try it out down below. And again, what's super exciting about this is the fact that it is open source. We're about to see a giant explosion in terms of AI imagery. And what's really exciting is what's coming up next for the Black Forest team, namely that is video. They have a few examples up that they're showing already. Uh, yeah, this looks really pretty insane. That cat looks very angry. Um, yeah, let's just see if we get this before, you know, Sora drops. In the meantime, do let me know what you think about Flux in the comments below. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.